divided rather mechanically among the four museums but some of their parts were auctioned and sold as unwanted residue. The Murakka in question was among them. Now its folia are kept not only in the British Museum and the First William Museums but in other countries like Qatar and USA also. So she will be focusing on this and the next lecture will be by uh, Professor Charles Melville. He will speak about his further investigations into the celebrated manuscript of Tarikh Khandan Timuria, the unique manuscript preserved in our library, the anonymous history of the dynasty of Timur, commissioned by the Emperor Akbar around 1585 in Fatehpur Sikri. The particular focus this time is on the text of the work, which has been little studied, and especially the text around pages that were illustrated with full page paintings, the subject of which cannot be identified from the pictures alone. He will be looking in some detail at some of the historical events reported after the death of Shahrukh in 1447, and especially those that have been illustrated to establish the context of the paintings, many of which are original subjects and have not been depicted in other histories of the period. In doing so, he will try to ascertain the sources on which the author, the history of Temuris, based his work. So now we welcome Professor uh, Charles Melville and Professor Feroza Melville to deliver their talks. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bita, for such a beautiful introduction. First of all, um, good uh, morning, still morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you all for coming. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to be here. I've never been in Patna before. It's um, a privilege to be here in this very traditional establishment. And I, I should congratulate the director on this absolutely incredible achievement. She's so energetic, so enthusiastic about the subject. And the, the commitment she's got for promoting um, the uh, 
traditions of uh, Islamic book art <coughs> is absolutely incredible, so congratulations. And it's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, so what I'm going to speak about today is um, still a um, work in progress, although I found this, maybe I'll, we will start with a PowerPoint. Hello? I don't PowerPoint. <laughs> Thank you. So um, the, the, the main subject of my talk is going to be about uh, this Morakka, uh, which I think, this is my personal theory, that it's going to be a present of the mother uh, who was the great empress of India, Hamidabhan Begum, and uh, she was going to prepare this album as a present for her son, who was just uh, um, uh, who has just ascended the throne, great emperor Akbar. So these are the two pictures from uh, the same album. Uh, these two are kept now in the British Museum in London. Uh, but the album itself is called the Fitzwilliam album because may, the, the main parts are now in the Fitzwilliam Museum, which is in Cambridge. It's a main museum in Cambridge, and it's a part of the University of Cambridge. So. I have already published most of it. Um, can we have the next slide, please? In this book, uh, which is a part of the series, um, it, it is called the um, um, Uzbek Heritage uh, in the World Collections. And we've been uh, involved in this project together with uh, um, our Honorable Director. Uh, and this is how we met, actually, in uh, Central Asia, in Tashkent, and traveled to some and other places. So my, my talk, as uh, um, Shai has just said, I will consist of two parts. In the first part, I will um, try to explain what actually the Fitzwilliam album is. And in the second part, I will try to offer you my uh, idea of how we can reconstruct it, because now it's kind of all over the world. So the album in question was compiled in India, uh, most likely in Delhi. And it consisted of the painting and pieces of calligraphy. Maybe we can have the next slide, please. Um, right. Um, the next one. Yes, so one of them. And um, it was, um, some parts were produced in Central Asia, probably in Bukhara, of this Bukhara style. And in Kabul, the, the pieces of calligraphy were made in Kabul. Uh, where uh, Emperor Akbar spent his childhood, very uh, uh, early uh, years of his life. Uh, by the middle of the last century, it uh, was in the possession of a best Can we go back? One? Yes, this is uh, the photo of, um, I, I should confess, this is not best Manu, this is his uncle. And this is my quest, and this is what uh, um, Dr. Shai uh, has just mentioned, because yesterday we had a very interesting trip to the High Court, where we were trying to find some information about the um, festival who ended his career here uh, in Patna, the Supreme Judge, and uh, I, I really hope that we would, would be able to find some um, archival documents related to his life and his uh, probably death. In, in partner. Um, right, so it, um, Stuart Hatchik uh, was a very close friend of the British royal family, and this is probably why Festival was sent to Cambridge to get his degree in law, and this is probably why um, he sent, uh, as part of his request, uh, his enormous collection of art, um, many manuscripts and artifacts to the Fitzwilliam Museum, which is part of the Cambridge University. So when he died in 1946, and uh, uh, he didn't have any heirs, so he sent um, his collection uh, of artifacts um, to England, and uh, four museums benefited from this. So it was the British Museum in London, the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge, Bristol Art Gallery, and also the V&A. And uh, um, in the British Museum, this is what is so peculiar. It was dispersed. The collection was dispersed. Can you imagine? 
it's already 1948. Uh, and um, they, and it's not just the artifacts and the manuscripts were sent to different man, uh, museums. The uh, entire manuscript, or for example, this album, were um, dismembered and sent to different ones. And uh, can we have the, the, the next one and the next? Yeah, so um, periodically, um, yes, yeah, so some of the manuscripts were um, divided into half, for example, like the album, or there is a manuscript for the Shahnameh, which was, uh, some of it was kept in the British Museum, and another part was sent to Cambridge. But some bits were sold <coughs> as unwanted residues, and uh, this actually created a job for me, because now I'm trying to reconstruct and trying to resurface some bits of the pieces, which are now appearing periodically at some um, sales auctions in, in the world. In London or in New York. Um, so the previous slide was actually one of them, which was sold at Sotheby's, and then now it, it, it was uh, it is now in Doha. It was bought by the uh, Museum of Islamic Art. So I think that the album was commissioned by Hamid Abu Begum, the widow of Emperor Humayun, uh, for her royal son, a young Emperor Akbar. And I have come to this conclusion having arranged the surviving parts of this murak in particular order. And the miracle happened, and now it's sort of like a puzzle put together. And uh, it reveals the picture of how probably the murak um, was uh, compiled, why it was commissioned, and the story of the creation for the providence. So the story is about Akbar, his childhood and youth, Presented in a visual form by means of um, several pairs of messy manuscript uh, paintings, like those took out. Yes. So you can see they should be seen together, right? Like a picture picture on both sides of the opening page. Um, and uh, uh, the message, the visual message, was supposed to be enhanced by the um, poetry. So, can we have the next one? Yes. Yeah, so the, the, the pieces of calligraphy were on the reverse side. And sometimes the paintings would be uh, accompanied by the um, 